the White House to request that the FBI reopen the background check on, on Judge Kavanaugh uh, and assess the allegations that have been brought forward uh, as part of the background check. It's exactly what was done uh, during the confirmation process for, for then-Judge Clar Clarence Thomas, and it's what should be done in this instance as well. And the reason being, Shannon, and I'm speaking as a former uh, committee mm -hmm. uh, counsel, albeit not the Judiciary Committee, but it, you know, with as much respect to my former colleagues, we're not equipped. We're not trained to conduct the kind of forensic investigations, to depose witnesses, to, to really build a case in the same way that the FBI is. And so if the Senate is legitimately interested in conducting a thorough, fair, and impartial investigation to get to the truth, either to conclude that, that uh, Dr. Ford is telling right. the truth or to clear Judge Kavanaugh's name, that's the way forward. Let me get John in here. John, I mean, it, to my understanding, there are investigators on staff to do this very thing. And the FBI has repeatedly said, at least publicly, they don't go out and do criminal investigations on something that happened 36 years ago. They wouldn't have jurisdiction, and this is not what they do, that this is what the Senate committee, Democrats and Republicans, should be doing. Well, Shannon, I was general counsel of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and there is a routine procedure for exactly this kind of case. There are people who always might raise doubts, come in with different questions as a nomination is nearing its consideration by the Senate. And so we do have investigators. There are investigators on staff whose job it is to run down accusations or questions about people in their background well, files. Let me, there let are me ask you about lawyers this then. on the staff. Okay, let me ask you about this then, because this is what the ranking member, Dianne Feinstein, she's a senator. She would know how this works, mm -hmm. we, we would assume. She says this, fact check. The FBI can investigate Dr. Blasey Ford's allegations as part of its background investigation. That is their job to say otherwise is false. It investigated Anita Hill's allegations of sexual harassment against Clarence Thomas. It should investigate this, too. So is it their job or the committee's job, John? There's, there's confusion about what the FBI does here. The FBI is not conducting a criminal investigation. Even if this happened yesterday, they wouldn't be con conducting a criminal investigation, because if this were a crime, it would be under state jurisdiction. The FBI wouldn't have that job. In this kind of function, the FBI is just helping the Senate conduct a background investigation, which is collecting all the information about someone, maybe making determinations about the credibility of the information about them, but they're not out there trying to solve crimes. They're not conducting forensic investigations like you would with a crime. They present that information to the committee. In okay. this case, in the Kavanaugh case, there is no forensics. This is 35 years ago. The only stories you need to hear from are from Kavanaugh, and Dr. Ford, well, no. and maybe a few well, other witnesses, and you have to make a credibility determination mm -hmm. by each senator about who's telling the truth, and then they take that into account when okay. they vote on whether to give their advice and consent. And Dave, we all know that Senators Grassley and Feinstein are good friends. They are. They are complimentary to each other all the time, but there's a little back and forth today. This letter from Senator Grassley to Senator Feinstein says the fact is that these allegations could have been raised both within the last seven weeks and in a way that protected Dr. Ford's anonymity. Instead, you chose to sit on the allegations until a politically opportune moment. He went on to say that he can't overstate how deeply disappointed he was, Dave. Uh, and in and, and senatorial language, that's that's a pretty stern letter. Um, look, I, I can't imagine the position that Senator Feinstein found herself in in, in receiving this letter, uh, a letter that requested uh, that, that the author remain uh, anonymous, confidential. I think she was in a very tough spot, and I think she's, she's endeavored to navigate this uh, really as her North Star being respecting Dr. Ford's wishes. So, you know, Shannon, I understand that it's inconvenient to the chairman's timing in terms of how he would like to move this nomination forward, but the fact is uh, we have credible allegations that, are, that are, have now surfaced publicly because they, they came through the well, media, and we now have to address them, and we have to do so in a thoughtful them, and deliberate though, way. Before she had her one-on-one -on -one meeting with him, Dave, she knew. She also knew during the public questioning. She also knew during the closed questioning, which she didn't show up for. Yeah, Shannon, honestly, those are questions for Senator Feinstein. I'm not going to presume mm -hmm. to, to stand in her shoes, other than to say she has said publicly she was endeavoring to respect the confidentiality right. and the trust that was vested in her from, from Dr. Dr. We've got to leave it there with two of our Senate legal eagles, uh, Dave and John. Thank you both very much.